Look at the colour of that water. Surely there's got to be some yabbies in there. G'day everyone. Today I'm going to put some yabby nets in, in a spot that I've never put yabby nets in. And then I'm going to go fishing in a spot that I haven't been fishing for many years. Hey you! You're watching Robbie Cocking. Right, I've got four open top lift nets. You might know them as pyramid nets. And I'm going to put, put them all in this drain, but two on uh, each side of the road. Right, the first net, it's got a few holes and it's had a bit of running repair work done to it. It can just go there. Net number two on the same side, but over near the other pillar. We can go down there. Now over to the other side of the, the bridge. Cord's a bit tangled on this one. That's a bit better. This one's got the double drumsticks. It's got two chicken drumsticks. Right, now this one, the fourth, and then I'm actually throw that over there. Close out of that bank where the grasses and stuff are. Right, I know all four nets are in this murky water. There's no impatient check today. I often just check them impatiently after about a quarter of an hour, and that's often because I'm, uh, I'm bored and I can't wait to check the nets. But I'm gonna go fishing now at a bridge that I caught one carp in many years ago. I just want to see whether there's any carp or even possibly redfin there and then I'll come back and check these a bit later on. Look at that big log floating down there. Something must have fallen in the creek. Years ago I fished off this bridge here and I caught a couple of redfin. Last time I came here, probably seven or eight years ago, I caught nothing but I saw some big carp. So I'm going to fish off the bridge. Now if the camera points down and you happen to see a crayfish net down there, don't stress, I'm not crayfishing out of season. That's just there so that if I catch a big carp and I can't lift it up, I'll untie the net here, lower the net, and then scoop the carp up with the net. That's all that's for. Right, let's put the line in and see if there's any fish in here. I've got a paternoster rig. I'm only using the one rod. A paternoster rig with two Janjuk worms because there's a bit of current there. So I want the sinker to sit on the bottom and the current to just make the worms wave around a little bit. I'm just going to drop that just down there. Bait fishing off a high bridge. Now for any kids watching, bait fishing off bridges is a lot of fun, but obviously you need to be really careful of cars and try and avoid busy roads. Look, I'm on a dirt road here at the back of nowhere and it's very quiet. Definitely try and avoid, avoid busy roads. On, straight on. Had a real nice bite. Just pulled straight down, no nibbles, just bang, and then I'm, now I'm on a snag. No way! I don't even think that I've got the bite on film. Just went -da 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 and snagged. Please come off the snag. Don't have to re rig. The ah, snapped it. Well, there's something here. I don't know what because that one won that battle, but there's definitely fish here. Better go and uh, tie on a new pattern oster rig. Right, I've got a new pattern ostrig, fresh worms, and it's going to cast back a little bit this time. Just obviously there's a snag there, so I want to try and get away from that. Here's a bite. I literally just put that back in and got him. Right, what have we got? If it's a big carp, I reckon. Yep, it is a big carp. Is it a big carp? It's very fat looking. Looks too fat to be a carp. A yellow belly, is it? That would surprise the hell out of me. I want to get a better look at this. There's got to be a carp in here, surely. Yeah, it's a carp. It's a carp. And now I get to test out the old net system. Undo the rope here. If a fisheries guy comes, I'm going to have to try and explain to me to him that I'm, uh, that I'm not actually crayfishing. Well, I don't know how I'm going to go with this, but anyway. Where is the fish? Such a fat carp. Ah, me, me, me float just fell in. Oh well. As long as I don't let go of the cord at any time, that shouldn't be a problem. Gee, that's a fat carp. It's not overly long. It's just very, very fat. Should have brought my short rod, my little stumpy rod. That would have been easier to get the carp back here above the net. Where is the net? Where's the fish gone? This system is going to be a bit trickier than I first thought. 
maybe not if I hadn't dropped the. Might try and just pull this float in. It's got about seven miles of cord on it. <laughs> the fish is still on. That's all happening. All right, and where's the fish? Over there. Where's the net? Just down there. Without a net, I'd have no chance of getting this fish up out of here. Where's the net? Where's the net? Where's the stink got him? It works! Look! I can land the big carp off the bridge! <laughs> there we are, folks. I'm on the board with a very fat carp of around 50 centimetres, maybe a little bit over, but just so fat. And now I'll uh, euthanize it, then get my line straight back in. There's not a second to lose. Right, my cray net, aka my landing net, is uh, back in position. I've tied it, I've retied the sinker because it was tangled. So I've still got a pat noster, but that's, uh, the hook's a lot closer to the sinker. And I'm just going to stick with the same two worms. Better to be safe than sorry. I've got off the bridge for this guy. Right, I'll put my line back in. Well, it's been about an hour. I had one bite when I first got here that snagged me, and then another bite like 30 seconds after I put the line back in, and I caught that big carp, and for the last 50 or so minutes, I haven't had a touch. So I'm going to pack up now and go and check my yabby nets. By the time I get there, they would have been in for over an hour. That should be long enough to tell me whether there's any yabbies in that spot. Right, it was 12.50, it's now 1.57. These nets have been in here for an hour and seven minutes. If I can get a few big ones, I'm going to do a catch and cook. Oh, I've got one, two, one little bait one. You'll probably fall through the nets, so I'll hold that over there. Yep, there he goes. That one's not very big, but he's big enough, I'll throw him in. Right, I've got two. That's a start. There are yabbies here. Well, there are yabbies here. There were two in the first net. I've just got to work out how I'm going to get down there to get some water in the bucket. Let's wrap around a bit of steel. Right, what about that number two? <laughs> There's a carp and a yabby. The yabby's not very big, but he's big enough. And the carp, well, that ain't going back. We've got a carp and a yabby in the net. He'll do for now. I prefer bigger, but he's big enough. Well, that carp's already been euthanized. I'll put the net back in right now. Oh, the yabby hold us there. I'll put some water in the bucket here before I uh, before I check the other nets. Right, I've got water in the bucket. I'll put a lot of water in too, just in case I pull the net up and it's full of yabbies. You just never know. Which it kind of is. You beauty. Yes. Awesome. One. Two. I'm quickly checking them for eggs as I turn them up. Three. This one can go back. It's a bit small. Four. There was five in this net. They're not big. They're big enough to keep for a feed, but they're not really big yabbies. Awesome. That makes me happy. Right, last net. Be good if it's full of big yabbies like that one. <laughs> Not one, I was just about to say none. It's got one. One yabby, one better than none. Awesome, what have I kept? I've kept six or seven. I'll give them another hour, then come back and check them again. Right, so I've got a few there. I'll put some grass in there. Somebody asked me in a recent yabbying video what the grass is for. That just stops the yabbies from killing each other and it allows them to climb up to the surface to get air if they want to breathe some air. Well, I'm liking this spot so far. It was the dirty water that attracted me to this spot. There was dirty water. I could see minnows swimming around in it. All the signs were there to indicate that it's worth putting a yabby net in. I'll go away for a while now. I'm going to try and catch a fish somewhere else. I won't go back to the bridge I was at. I'll go and try and find somewhere else. Then come back and check them a bit later. And hopefully I'll have enough for a cook-up. 
Right, I found another bridge to fish. I've caught a lot of fish in this creek, but I've never fished right here. I'll try this bridge for a little while, and if nothing comes along, well, I'll go and try another bridge for a while. Well, I've been here about 20 minutes and haven't had a nibble. So I might go and have a look around, find somewhere else. This is a nice looking spot. There's got to be a fish in there. How deep is it? Should be deep enough. What about over there? Yeah, there's got to be a fish in here, surely. This side of the bridge doesn't look too appealing. This spot here actually looks great. It's a great looking fishing spot. I'm sure if it's a faint little bite or whether the current's got my line. Might even be a yabby bite or something. Definitely looked like something was happening here. Yeah, something's definitely pulling on that. It's like a yabby bite. That was a definite bite that was. There it goes. Definitely just had a bite. Hopefully from a redfin and not a carp. Got him. That's a carp, I think. If it's a redfin, it's a good one. There is a nice redfin too, look. You beauty! Yes! I'm going to keep that because I'm going to cook those yabbies. And now I'm going to have yabbies and redfin. I've got some vegetables actually. I'm planning on having a healthy, a healthy catch and cook. Now I'm going to have a little bit of fish to go with me yabbies and me veggies. It's not a big fish, but I'll be able to get a couple of fillets off it. Beauty! Awesome! Now I'm excited. That was just over there, under that fence. I've got some veggies to have for tea tonight. I'm planning on, uh, on doing a, filming a healthy catch and cook tonight. So now I've got redfin, yabbies and an assortment of fine vegetables. Got him. Another bite. It's another redfin, I reckon. Yep, about the same size as the last one. I might keep him too. Two nice reddies for the plate. As I said, they're not huge redfin, but they're big enough. I'm going to have a really nice dinner tonight. I'm going to have fresh redfin with fresh yabbies and some fresh vegetables. Awesome. I'm excited. Right, I'm just going to put the same worms on. I've only got about another 10 minutes or so, and then I'm going to go and check those nets. Hopefully there's a few more yabbies in them. And then it's time to go and cook. Wait, look. Got him. The moment I put this a bigger fish. If this is a, uh, this is a redfin, it's a good one. Look at that for a redfin. That's a thumping redfin, and I haven't got a landing net with me. I really don't want to lose this fish, because what I'll do... I'll cook those two that I've already caught tonight, and I'll put this one in the in the esky. Yes, beauty! Have a look at that for already. Oh, it snapped the line just then. That's okay. I'll take that one home, and I'll have that for lunch tomorrow. So I'll have the two small ones for tea tonight, and this monster tomorrow. You, oh, I'm so excited! The old Jan Jack worms, eh? Fish just love them. Right, I was being a bit over an hour again. Now I've already got seven or eight yabbies, so if I can just get a couple more, that'd be great. If I get 20 more, that'd be better, but it's not likely. Oh, I couldn't, uh, there's one that's too small and one that's okay. These aren't whoppers. They're not monster yabbies, but they're certainly big enough to get a feed off. If you, if you can get them out of the net. No eggs. Beauty. You can go back in the drink. I'll take the bait out. So far, I've added one to the telly. What about net number two? Ah oh, yes, I'll add two more to the tally. They'll both go in the pot. Awesome. Now I'll check net number three in between cars going past. This is the net that had heaps in it earlier. Oh, it's got the two biggest ones of the day in it now. There's only two, but they're the two biggest. So they'll both do. No eggs in either of them, I can see. Beauty. And then the fourth and final net. Can I come home strong? No, no, not really. Oh, I've got one. Well, on this quiet road, I've just had about five cars and a tractor go past. 
So I'm going to go somewhere else nice and quiet to go and film me cook up somewhere in the bush. Righto, this is where the magic's about to happen. This is where I'm about to cook. But before I do, I want to show you my new stove. I bought myself a brand new stove and it is a ripper. I've got so many stoves, it's ridiculous. This is a Jet Boil Genesis Base Camp. It comes in a bag. You take it out of the bag. The bag actually has this plastic thing in here as a wind guard, but I'm not going to worry about using that. It's a bit flimsy looking. Right, here's the, the pot. The lid is the frying pan. Then there's the pot. The pot lid is not just a lid, but it's also a strainer. So when I cook the yabbies, I'm going to be able to just pick it up by the handle, pour all the water out, and leave the yabbies in the pot. That's a really good thing. Now, inside the pot, there's the pot. One of the reasons I bought this stove is because I wanted a stove with a big pot so that I can cook bulk yabbies. My usual little hiking and backpack stoves have these little weeny pots, but this is a much bigger pot. And you'll see underneath, it's got these... Uh, this design under here to help hold the heat in, which helps uh, speed up the boiling process, but it also allows it to fit on the stove top a lot better. And I'll show you that now. This is the stove. It's being held together by these two rubber clips. Unclip them, fold it over, and there is my two burner stove. It's got a uh, piezo ignition, or, or a sparker if you want to call it that, so you can just hit the button and, and that lights it. It's got a... Um, and it's got an infinitely variable flame control. Unlike my Coleman, which my hyper flame, you get it down really low and then it springs back up high. This will go so low that it'll go out and reignite and go out and reignite as it goes around. Or you can have it up to a full, full flame and everything in between. It's just got an amazing control over the flame. Right. Here's the pot. Remember I said before it fits on, it sits really well. You put that on there, it's in. You can't knock it off. You've got to lift it up. But, uh, it's, it's unreal. Now, the first thing I want to do here today, I've got to plug the gas bottle in. It runs off. Where is it? Now, it runs off this gas bottle. No doubt you could run it off a full-size gas bottle as well, but I'm just using one of these for convenience purposes and this this was actually in the lid of the bag i forgot to show you that part so i plug that into that that into that and away we go now there's the jet boil genesis base camp ready to go i don't know how the gas the gas it comes out of this cylinder into there and into the stove but how does it get over to this stove it must there must be a little pot oh there it is in there you can see a little copper pipe in that uh in that little arm there, the foldable arm. That's how it works. Anyway, I've got it all set up. I'm going to throw a heap of water into this big pot and I'm going to cook up all those yabbies and then while they're cooling, I'll get the veggies and the fish on and fill up the fish. One issue that I do have here today is water. This, uh, I'm, oops, I'm not used to cooking in such a huge big pot so I haven't brought a huge amount of water. But that'll be enough. That'll have, uh, that'll be more than enough. And I've got this bottle of water here, if I want to add more water to it, or if I want to uh, wash my hands and stuff as I fill up those fish. In fact, I'm going to put a heap of white vinegar in. I've got a couple of inches of white vinegar, so that'll top it up perfectly. Might even squirt a little bit of lemon into the water. Heaps of water in there. Right, there's me water, vinegar and lemon combination. Let's fire it up. Turn the gas on, light it. Away we go. I'll put the lid on. Now I know a lot of people, one of the most contentious points on my channel is when I cook yabbies. Whenever I throw them into the water, they're boiling and I uh, people think that it's cruel. I think as soon as they hit the hot water they just die, that's what I think. And I've got a few friends who are chefs and they all tell me the same thing when they cook crayfish, uh, prawns, etc. They get the, the water up to a raging boil and then they just throw them straight in and they just die straight away. That's what I like to do. I'm not going to show it because it does tend to offend a few people, but that's how I'm going to be cooking these yabbies. There's a couple of them there that are a little bit smaller than I'd like them to be, but on the whole, they're not too bad. They're not massive, but they're certainly big enough. And the water's on the boil. 
This is an absolute ripper, this frying pan. I have actually used this stove set up at home. This is its maiden voyage in the field, but I have used it at home. Water's warming. I may even end up cooking with two frying pans. This is the one that I take on my, uh, on a lot of my other kitchen cooks. The little sea to summit 10 incher. But the one that comes with the jet boil, this is a beauty. I just put my finger in the water and it wasn't really warm. And then I realised I didn't have it right up. Look how much you can turn this. You can give it like four full turns. Look at it going turning, 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 turning. That's down low. It can go lower. It's just full flame control. That's why I really like this. That's really like Watch this how many times I'll turn it. I was trying to boil the water. It was on about there. Look at how many turns I had to give it. Now it might get boiling a bit quicker. It must be getting close. It's well, starting to boil. But I don't put the yabbies in when it's just starting to boil. I put them in when it's a raging boil. So I'll give it a couple more minutes. It looks like we've got a pretty serious boil here. Yeah. There's probably close to four litres of liquid in there. There's uh, three litres of water. My, my water bottle is a three litre drink bottle. That's all in there. Probably a, well over half a litre of vinegar and quite a bit of lemon juice. I'll put the lid back on, bring it back up to a raging boil and then introduce, introduce the yabbies and cook them up. Ah, oh, they are looking good. That is just an amazing sight. That's a five litre pot. I absolutely love this Jet Boil Genesis Base Camp. Now I'm not sponsored by Jet Boil before anybody jumps to conclusions. I bought this during the week and I absolutely love it. It's brilliant. I reckon that's enough. I'll turn it off. I'll turn it four times. It's like doing up a screw. Yeah. Usually I get the tongs now and I pick them out one at a time with the tongs. But I'm really looking forward to trying this and seeing how it works. The lid on the jet boil has got hole in it, holes in it. It's a strainer lid. I should be able to tip the water out without losing the yabbies. Got to be a bit careful. It's very hot. I probably should have some kind of gloves on. Look at that. It's very hot, as you'd expect. I haven't got a tea towel with me. That's better, a bit of paper towel under each thumb. You can see the yabby's all pushed up against the lid there. Alright, awesome. All the water's gone. Oh, yeah. if you could smell what I can smell right now, you'd be, uh, you'd be in heaven. They smell so good. Right now, I've got a few vegetables here. I'm going to cut them up first before I fill up the fish. The yabbies are sitting over there in the shade under some paper towel cooling down. I'd rather be filleting a fish in vegetable scraps than filleting than cutting up vegetables in fish guts, if you know what I mean. I've got some tomatoes here. Some uh, They're not cherry tomatoes, but they're the next size up there. They're small tomatoes, I forget the name of them. Cocktail truss tomatoes, according to the packet. I've got some asparagus. It's always good to cut a bit off the end because they uh, get a bit woody down that end. They can go out there somewhere. And I'll cut up an onion. And I'll cut up an onion. Hopefully this doesn't make me cry out here in the great outdoors. <coughs> now I've got to go and get ready to fill up the fish. Now there's all my fillets, I've got to give them a, a wash or a rinse before I cook them. 
but I'm gonna put them under some ice now in my esky, which is down here. But right, I'm nearly ready to start cooking, but before I do, I've just taken my redfin fillets out from under the ice. I'm just gonna wash them with, with, with fresh water, and then I'm gonna throw them in this bag with herb and garlic breadcrumbs, and I'm gonna shake it up and that will coat the fish. I've cooked redfin like this plenty of times before, and it works really well with these fine crumbs, these herb and garlic crumbs. So I'll crumb these, and then it's time to start cooking. This is going to be a proper feast, I can tell you. Now the first thing that I want to do is light this stove, this side. That's a goer. I'm going to get it nice and hot. I'm going to throw my asparagus straight in like that. It's like toasting them, just pure heat with nothing else. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a bit of oil on this side. I can see the oil is, I can see it's all running down that end. I actually went and got a couple of sticks before, just in case I was on a bit of an angle. How does that work? Is that a bit better? That's much better. Sort of leaning this way a little bit now, but anyway. Now I'm cooking with olive oil. I went and saw my dietitian this morning. I see a dietitian regularly. He's a wonderful man, very, very good at what he does, and he gives me lots of valuable information. And I don't use it as well as I should, and that's why I haven't lost a lot of weight. But I asked him about oil, and he said cooking with olive oil, regular olive oil, is very healthy provided you don't let it get too hot. So I'm going to heat these right up now and get them really hot. Then I'm going to turn the heat down and then put the olive oil in and then I'm going to cook all my vegetables in the olive oil. He said what happens with olive oil, it's very healthy as it is and you can heat it up enough to cook in it but once it starts smoking and, and spitting the whole chemical composure or elements in the oil change right around and then it becomes very very unhealthy. Now I'll let that cool right down before I put any oil in. I'm going to start shelling my yabbies over here on the side. I'm going to rip the tails off them, like that. Take the poo line out, give them a bit of a wash and get them ready to cook. I don't think the shells are big enough, the claws are big enough to keep to eat on any of these yabbies, so it's going to be all about the tails with these ones. Now that that's cooled right down, I'm going to introduce some oil. It must still be a little bit hot in the middle there. It's going to need the stick treatment as well, I think. Throw in some tomatoes. And some onions. And I can cook nice and slow on that oil that's uh, not too hot. Now once again, the same as with this side, I'm going to cook them low. I'm cooking them very slow and that's because I don't want the oil to get hot. Based on what my dietitian told me this morning. Cook them slow over a lower heat and it's healthier than just burning them and uh, burning the oil. This smells so good. I've got my fish in here, just like the veggies, I've got it down low. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to throw the yabbies in here as well. They're already cooked. But I'm just going to just heat them up a little bit in the oil, and then I'm going to eat them as a bit of an entree. I'll have to show this to Dan next time I see my dietitian and ask him if that's too hot. You ready for it? Blow on it. That's not too hot. That is so good. Yabby meat is the nicest meat on the planet. It is without a doubt the nicest food that I've ever eaten. Yabbies. Love them. Now 
One of the reasons I use so much oil when I'm doing this, because unlike on a stove top, it can be very, very hard to, to get things level, and you end up with oil down one end of the pan. If you want to cover the whole pan, you need to have it deep at one end, and shallow at the other end, if that makes sense. Right -o. I reckon I'm ready to dish this up. I put two pieces of fish in my esky under the ice to take home for lunch tomorrow. I reckon there's, uh, that's enough for my tea tonight, I think. Now right, time to dish up. Come and get it. Well, folks, there's my tea. I've already eaten the yabbies as an entree and they were amazing. Now I'm going to eat the main meal. There's a fair bit there. I might not get all the way through it. Then I'll uh, bring you back and I'll tell you what I thought. I'm so full. I'm just leaning on my car waiting for my tea to settle. This, this type of cooking is new to me. I'm not a very good cook, so don't laugh at me. But I've got to tell you that it tasted amazing. That fish was... That was just next level. That was amazing. The yabbies were fantastic. The vegetables, well, as far as vegetables go, they were very nice. I couldn't eat it all. I probably ate about three quarters of it. This has been a wonderful day. I wasn't expecting those redfin. I thought I might get a few yabbies, but I didn't expect that many. I've just had a fantastic day. Thank you all very much for watching.